Now, you know, the Bible doesn't specifically address dating as a separate phase of life. You know, when you, when you look through, through the Bible, you, you hear about how single people should, should behave to one another, and then you learn about how married people should behave to one another. So um, the Bible doesn't specifically give this, this period of time and address it specifically as this dating period as though it's something separate from being single or being married. Um, because according to God, there really is only two types of relationships. So when we think about dating, you know, when it comes to boy-girl relationships and, and you're dating, it really shouldn't be any different to how single people relate to one another. Because th there is only single and there is only marriage. So it shouldn't be any different to any other relationship between any single man and single woman, besides the talking points. Really, that's the only difference. The difference is it's a single man and a single woman talking about marriage so that they can get to know one another in order to see whether or not they want to marry each other. So because the Bible doesn't specifically, you know, talk, like identify this period of dating as a separate period, you know, there's single and then there's married, you know, that means that there's going to be a lot of positions and a lot of rules and uh, things that people come up with that are just going to be man's opinions. You know, and I'm not, I'm not going to say that everything I'm going to be preaching in this series is going to be, you know, uh, it'll be, I believe, based on biblical principles, but it's going to be something that I've developed my own convictions and wisdom and, and my own opinions on the topic as well. And that's what you'll read if you go and read about uh, dating and courtship. It's going to be a lot of people's opinions on methods and, and good, uh, good practices that um, they just encourage people to, to do from you know, I guess just the wisdom that we, we learn in life. So, you know, whilst it doesn't always mean that rules are, are bad, it, we just need to be careful, um, you know, not to be dogmatic about things that are our opinion. Because I know in a lot of churches, people come up with these rules and regulations and these systems of courtship, and they're dogmatic about like, you know, if you're not following, you're not doing this, and then getting counselling, and then going through this six-week course together, and then <laughs> doing all these things, like they, they think that you're doing something wrong. But, they, you know, this is just a rule that they've imposed, and maybe they impose on the people in their church if they want to marry them. Um, but I just want us to be aware of that, that they are just opinions, and just maybe good practices that they've put into play, but it doesn't mean you're sinning if you don't follow all these man-made rules and, and dogmas. <clears throat> so I did mention, so in, you know, in God's eyes, you know, and this is why you know, when, when it comes to dating, it really shouldn't be any different to two single people, how, how you would treat, uh, uh, if you're single, how you would treat another unmarried woman. Because according to God, I believe there is only two relationship statuses. You know, the Bible says, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife and they, shall, they too shall be one flesh. So according to God, you go from being single to married. Um, you don't go from being single to then in a relationship dating and then in a relationship marriage. Um, and, and, I'll, and the reason why I'm sort of stressing this point, I'll explain in a second. So according to God, there are only two types of relationship statuses. There's single and there's married. It's not like Facebook, right? You know, Facebook, there's multiple. I don't know what I... So Facebook has like single, and then it has married, and then it has, you know, it's complicated, right? Which I don't even know what, what people use that for, right? You know, is it, is it complicated, meaning it's unnatural? It's against nature? You know, maybe, maybe that's why it's complicated, because it's not meant to be. It's, co it's complicated. Um, and then well, there's another one that's in a relationship. So, you know, so Facebook will have the three, right? The Facebook will have single, in a relationship and then marriage, but God doesn't. So God doesn't recognize that inner relationship. He only recognizes it if it's a marriage. Otherwise, you're single. Um, you know, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit like the concept... I'll show you here. Uh, you know, it's a bit like the concept of teenager. You know, there's no teenager in the Bible, right? There's only a child... There's a, there's a young man and there's you know, an old man, but there's child and there's man. Look here in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So you see there that you go from being a child to becoming a man. You, you don't go from be, being a child and then entering and being a teenager and then becoming an adult. So this concept of teenager is not found in the Bible. There's uh, just child and man. 
So, so being a teenager, because you know, it, it's almost like you know, they, they create this extra status and then it gives you an excuse to be things you shouldn't be. You know, it's because a teenager is basically an adult that's behaving like a child. That's what a teenager is. So being a teenager doesn't give you an excuse to be disrespectful, be, be lazy, be um, irresponsible, you know, be dirty. You know, I mean, a lot of teenagers like, uh, are, are very uh, like unclean. Or it doesn't, give you a, uh, it doesn't give you an excuse to be rebellious. You know, we, and, and, and for, us, for those of us that are parents, you know, we should not allow our children to be teenagers. You know, this, teen, this teenager, we shouldn't allow this sort of behavior and just think, well, it's just because they're a teenager. No, it's not. They're either they need to grow up and be an adult or they're still a child. And if they're old enough to be an adult, they need to start behaving like an adult. We shouldn't um, accept this sort of behavior. We need to correct it. It's, it reminds me of when people say things like about children that are, that are misbehaving and they'll say things like, oh, they're just being children. And, and what you need to understand is that that's the problem. It's, it's because they're just being children and that's why they're being naughty. And yes, there are good attributes of a child and there are bad attributes of a child. So when we say, yes, they're just being children, in, in one aspect, it is okay for them to be children because, you know, they're going to be naive, they're going to be humble, they're going to be playful, they're going to, you know, they're not going to wa want to do things that adults do, they're not going to be able to sit still as long as adults sit still. But when children are being naughty, when they're being sinful, we, we can't just have the mentality of just, you know, just let them be children. We need to take out the rod and the Bible says, when foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. And that's why, you know, we need to, to spank our children we need to allow the desirable behaviors, but we need to spank and drive out um, sinful behaviors. So I'm going to talk, <clears throat> I'm going to explain uh, why I think it's important that we realize that there are only two relationship statuses when I talk about the problems with um, people treating boyfriend and girlfriend as a separate relationship. 